and girls, no matter where in the world you might be, thank you for making us part of your day and welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. We're taking a break from all the usual stuff tonight to do something a little bit extra fun. Happy birthday to the King. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Indeed, good evening. Ah, oh, look at him, so glorious. Happy birthday to Thierry Henry, born in 1977 and 45 years young today. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hope you are all safe and sound out there. Having a pretty epic summer. I salute you. At ease, everyone. At ease. Super Kev um, is not with us this evening. Uh, you have me, all solo. How's everyone doing out there? Let's have a look and see who is in the house. We got Boyce, we got Trevor, we got Tammy, um, we got CM, uh, we got Lynn, uh, we have Rich, and we have who else? We got Guna Dave. We got all the usual suspects in the house. Welcome to the show. For those of you listening and listening and on replay. Thank you so much for joining us and to those on the audio platforms, uh, chilling and listening to the show on iTunes, Acast and Spotify. Thank you so much as well. You know, this is starting to get on my nerves a little bit. They are our sponsor and our partner. So show a little bit more respect. Otherwise, you'll get a yellow card. Hey, Maggie, how's it going? Thanks very much for joining us this fine evening. And just to annoy uh, Newman. Here is the Zenith Coin. They are also the official licensed partner of the Arsenal Football Club, and they're producing some incredible memorabilia, treasuring the past and also respecting the future. It's not NFTs. It's none of that stuff. It's an actual physical coin that you can own. It's collectible. It's hand numbered. It comes with a certificate of authenticity, and it also comes in a beautiful box as well. But I'm assuming, Newman, you've never seen a box like this because if you propose to someone at some point, I'll be shocked myself. Um, I'm threatening you. I am. I am officially doing that. And here it is. Just the Dublin, are you? Ah, thank you to our partner, Zenith. Um, we are very uh, proud to be partnering with an official licensed partner of our beautiful football club. How's everyone doing this evening? Some are good so far. Well done, Matty K. You can also go to zenithcoins.com and put in HS20 and you get 20% off your purchase. And stay tuned to the end of the show today because I am going to tease something huge that is happening on the Highbury squad next me next week. And I mean huge. Thanks, Sim. I think it's fire too. We do think it's fire. It's very, very sexy. Attention seeking as always. Well done. Well said, Matthew, the creator of our wonderful gifts, of our wonderful little mascot here. We've got Vessi, who loves to save goals. I'm telling you, I'm going to send you the actual video of her playing goalkeeper. It's un uh, unbelievable. And of course, hit that like button for Vinny, wearing his dicky bow. On Dickie Bow Eve, he just won't take it off. There you go. Here are the coins. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. HS20, zenithcoins.com. Go check it out. All right, here we go. Um, hello, frenemy E. Welcome. How's it going? Hope you're well. Black Falcon, I have to get back to you. There's another partner we've got coming um, very soon, and you're going to love this. So, uh, I just need to do my admin a little bit better. In fact, if anyone wants to be my intern for the season, please do let me know. Um, I'm looking for some extra, extra help. I'm biting this season, Gun. Not mess, don't mess with me this season. I am not, not having it. Absolutely. It is something real, something tangible, something you can hold in your hand and enjoy it. Happy birthday to the king. What a legend he is, right? Absolutely incredible. Bit of noise in the background today. Have to have the door open because it's extra hot, so please bear with me. Hope the sound on the mic, though, is uh, is all good for you. Right, let's see what Vic is saying. 
I will definitely be buying two at least. Can't wait for another great show. So, um, oh, you're too good. You're too kind for me. Uh, too kind to me. Thank you so much. Um, you guys are going to love this as well. Uh, it's uh, it's coming soon, and it's going to be extra, extra special. Lots of exciting things happening. So where was I, by the way? I was teasing you about something that is coming at the end of the show. So uh, I'm going to make a tease, but I'm also going to give you the opportunity to win a couple bits, and it's going to involve sending me an email. So get pre get prepared for that because we have a <laughs> – I can't wait for next week. We've got a really big show coming with a very, very special someone who actually has never been on the show before. So let's just say be excited and listen to the end. All right, here we go. Did he get robbed in 2002? Let's talk about this a little bit. He uh, was the Ballon d'Or runner-up in the 03 season and uh, Nedved won that year. Thierry came second and Maldini was third. He also came third in the 06 season. And that was the year the Italians dominated, of course. Fabio Cannavaro finished in first and Buffon second and Thierry Henry third. I have a lot of things I want to say about Thierry Henry before I get to sharing my favorite goals um, with him. That's right, Lynn, only special ones get the uh, get those. 33 fivers, welcome. You still owe me fivers. Where are they? Good evening, GD. Uh, welcome. Happy birthday to the king. Well said, Tammy. I digress. So I think, and you guys can tell me what you think before I start sharing my, my favorite five goals, or 100 of you in live chat. I know it's a summer evening, a lot of you out hanging out, maybe listening to other shows as well. Um, thank you for joining me. I think that Thierry Henry, considering what he has won, and let's go through it a little bit, right? Yes, probably should have won more Premier Leagues at the Arsenal. Uh, two, won two FA Cups. Uh, we won't talk about being runner-up in the Champions League because that doesn't count, and the UEFA Cup runner-up. Of course, he won two leagues in Barcelona. He won the Copa del Rey, the Supercopa de España. Uh, the Champions League finally was his in the 08-09 season. Um, won the UEFA Super Cup, won the FIFA Club World Cup. He also won the World Cup and the European Championship, and the Confederations Cup with France. He was the Ballon d'Or runner-up in 2003. He was third place in 2006, as I said at the beginning of uh, the show. He was the FIFA World Player of the Year, won the Silver Award in 03 and 04. I mean, it goes on and on and on. He was the in the Team of the Year for the Premier League in, I don't know, five or six seasons. Uh, he was ridiculously talented. And he did things that I think at times are comparable to Zidane. And I actually don't understand why Zidane and Thierry aren't talked about more in the greatest of all time list. And when he came to us as a young pup in 99, you know, he was, a I wouldn't say a broken player, but he was definitely a, a player who didn't shine at Juventus the way a lot of people were expecting him to. He also came to us as a winger, right? One of Wenger's greatest achievements for me is how he transformed Thierry Henry from a winger into that central role. But you could see also that through the way that he played football, being a winger made him, I think, have that extra special something up front. 3rd of August, 1999, for me, an absolutely vintage year. It was like the creation of this fine Arsenal football wine. He walked onto the pitch in, what do you guys, uh, let's see what you guys think of this. Because actually it's one of my favorite shirts. Where is it? It's somewhere here. No, I don't have it. The Dreamcast shirt. Do you guys, do you guys remember the Dreamcast? Of course you do remember the Dreamcast shirt. Um, and... You know, he arrived like Perez, like Bergkamp a little bit. You know, they weren't that great to begin with. But my goodness, he came with a chip on his shoulder and something to prove. And boy, did he prove it. I can't believe I was listening 
a couple of shows the other day, and of course, with it being the 30th year of the Premier League, everyone's putting their best 11s together. And I find it hard to believe that anyone can put a best 11 together of the Premier League era and not have Thierry Henry on that list. I just think that's probably mostly Tottenham fans and Manchester United fans and Chelsea fans. But I also really, truly believe that there is a section of fans that respect what Thierry Henry has done as a player and also what he's done, you know, for the game. And so I think that when you look at what he's won, what he achieved, he wasn't just a tap-in merchant. He wasn't a goal hanger. He scored some of the most spectacular goals that the Premier League has seen. And he did it often. He was absolutely sensational. Yeah, yeah, I said that. And I just don't understand how he can't be in that conversation. Of course, Messi's a magician. Ronaldo's a magician. They're all wonderful players. I think Zidane's a magician. I think Thierry Henry is a, magi a magician. And the comparables, I think, always get a little bit, you know, blurred. But he also won when he went to Barcelona. And he won with the same players Messi had won with. And, you know, would Messi be a different player if he didn't have Xavi and Iniesta? We don't know that. Would Thierry Henry be a different player if he wasn't playing with Dennis? We don't know that. Would he be different? I mean, look at that. Let's just take a minute. What a team. That is hot. I have that shirt. That is beautiful. <laughs> just took a minute there. <laughs> Let me get some of your comments up as we go through this. A lot of other clubs' fans, says Chrissy, love Thierry Henry. They have him down as the greatest player ever in the history. You know, I know Andy Goldstein yesterday when he was, I think he was just doing it to wind up Darren Bent, you know, um, didn't have Thierry Henry in his starting 11. Come on. Seriously. Thierry Henry had it all. Absolutely. This is making me want to cry. It's happy tears, though, right? I mean, it's just so happy to have had the honor and the pleasure to watch this guy play football. I love that kit, by the way. Woo! Come on, the original. That was a re that man, what an emotional season that was. Dang. Look at that. How many clubs can say that they have had these kinds of players play for them. And I don't want to touch on too much of what's happening at the club today because I just wanted to honour him, and especially as it's the 30 years and it's his birthday today, that we've had not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. I mean, we have had a litany of absolute golden players with so much talent that have blessed our club and have played some of the greatest football we've ever seen. And you can go back to the 71 double winning side. You can go to the 89 team. You could go to the almost invincibles, the super Kev, Alan Smith, European trophy winners, the invincibles. You could go as far back as you want. And even in our darkest times, we won four FA Cups. Granted, they weren't the best Arsenal teams we've ever seen, but to still win four FA Cups when we were absolute average in terms of competitiveness and being consistent in the Premier League, that's an, uh, anyone, any club would take one of those FA Cups. Just one. And we actually qualified for the Champions League for how many years with having players like Jovino and Shamak. I mean, there's as bad as it's been, we've still had things 
to celebrate, but we also know that, you know, the faults of the club led to a demise and now we're kind of going back there. And I'm not saying that these plays that we have right now are going to go there, but I think for the first time in a long time, we can all agree that we've got players that we can fall in love with again and hope that they can emulate just a smidgen of what someone like Thierry Henry did. So one love the Arsenal. I like that. So I wanted to take a departure from transfers, post-game analysis, player ratings, transfer market news. There's a lot of that going on, and you can get that from some fantastic channels who do it a lot better than I do here. If you want the best transfer news, you should tune into Tom Canton on Guna Talk TV at 8 a.m. every morning. He really has done a phenomenal job this summer and continues to do an amazing job. Check out Harry and Dan and all those guys. If you want a little bit of a laugh, go to the Gooners podcast. For tonight, I just wanted to wax lyrical about this guy. He arrived when I arrived in England and left when I left. That's a good time. Good timing. Good timing. So Craig, excellent. This is where I want to come to, right? So this is Premier League based only. Some of you may want to talk about the Real Madrid goal in the Champions League, the return magic goal against Leeds in the FA Cup, but this is about the Premier League, right? So before we get to your bit, uh, Craig, because I'm wondering how much and I want to hear what you guys say. I wanted to share some quotes from some very influential people in the game about Thierry Henry. And uh, start with Arsene Wenger. I don't know what game he was talking about, and this is courtesy of Planet Football, by the way. It was embarrassing for the defenders. He just scored when he wanted. Maybe he was talking about us playing Tottenham. Sorry, E. Paul Merson, Thierry Henry would play for Arsenal like he was a 20-year-old playing in an under-12 league, and I've never seen that before. Dizou, Thierry Henry is probably technically the most gifted footballer ever to play the beautiful game. Jamie Carragher, Cara, I've used this analogy before, and I make no apology for using it again. When he hit top gear and ran past you, it was like trying to chase after somebody on a motorbike. When you do a scouse accent, I don't know what it is, but your face kind of goes like this. And if it's crap, I don't care. I'm going to read it like that. When Arsenal were the Invincibles in the period of between 20, 2003 and 2004, Henri rivaled Ronaldinho as the best in the world, a great goal scorer, not to mention a scorer of great goals. He's the finest player I've ever seen in the Premier League. His game doesn't have any weaknesses. Who switched off? <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's put a hat on. Here we go. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Let's put a hat on. Here we go. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Absolutely couldn't resist. He did put him on his ass plenty of times. Not bad, not bad. I'm getting uh not bad. Okay. I'm sure I've annoyed someone. Someone's gonna write on on uh, YouTube that I completely bastardized <laughs> a scouse accent. Boy, it's hot here. Bloody hell. Um so yeah. That was good, Sophie. Not bad. She'll never work for Sky after that. You should have seen what I wrote to Gary Neville the other day. Amy's sister, Sophie. <laughs> nice one, Scylla. <laughs> There's a problem with your audio. I'm sure there is. Okay. Gary's going <laughs> to... I think he may block me already. All right, let's do another one. I promise no more accents because next one is from Lionel Messi. The first day that he came into the dressing room, I did not dare look him in the face. I knew everything that he had done in England. Gianluca Vialli. Oh, I loved watching him play football. The only way to stop Thierry Henry with a gun. That's brilliant, isn't it? Absolute brilliant quote. I love that. Oh, 
Here's the Dreamcast shirt. I found it. Um, Paul Scholes. On his day, he was absolutely scintillating, a supreme athlete and a magnificent footballer. What amazed me was that he never seemed to get a sweat on, unlike me today. He could run 100 metres past five players and he wouldn't even breathe heavily. Peter Beardsley. I tell my kids in the academy at Newcastle to watch Henri. He plays with such a swagger, not an arrogance. That is his great quality. Ronaldinho. Henri's a beautiful player and has not um, and has got the complete technique. I adore watching him. I respect him very much as a man and as a footballer. He reminds me of myself. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant from Ronaldinho. Only he could kind of make that comment. Uh, just top shelf stuff. I'm watching Brookside. <laughs> Is that still on? Come on, you know the best ever episode of Brookside was when Anna Friel and her girlfriend kissed for the first time on national television in the 90s. Thank you so much. Uh, here's another quote for you. Gianfranco Zola, who was a great player, by the way, in the Premier League. He's one of those players who can really ruin your day. George Best, oh, legend. I don't recognize myself in the plays I see today. There's only one who excites me, and that is Thierry Henry. He's not just a great footballer. He's a showman, an entertainer. And that is the beauty of Henri. He was a showman. He was an entertainer. He was just the pizzazz, the Hollywood, but he backed it up, you know. I mean, there's being trying to be an entertainer and doing a few dribbles here and there, but every single time he just he had the razzle, the dazzle. It was quite incredible. And for someone like George Best to say that about Thierry Henry is magic. Michel Platini said, say what you want about him these days, He's got something that no French player has ever had. He can do everything from scoring goals to giving assists, crossing, creating space for other players. He fights for every ball. I've never seen a player like him in France. These are his peers talking about him the way they are. And he was poetry in motion. Let's get some of your comments up. In that 02-04 team, he had a proper tactician as a manager that have won it all. Mm. Just need to do it in the big games. What do you think about this? Okay, I understand that. People say that about Salah now, right? If a player is a great player, this is why I think what separates Lionel Messi and Ronaldo from everybody else because they've done it in big games. They've always done it in big games. The big games, they've stepped up when they've had to. I mean, also, though, look at the players they were surrounded with and... Thierry was surrounded with great players, just sometimes in big games. Doesn't, doesn't mean you haven't shown up or you've bottled it. It could also mean that things don't go for you. That goal against the Spuds, the greatest. Well, let's get to that, shall we? Why not? It's iconic. It's one of the goals that defines him. There's a statue about him. You know, um, I thought so, but we're talking about the Premier League. But yeah, I, I, I figured it would get generic. 39 goals in 51 games. Lynn says, I loved Henri. However, do you think he was in our squad today? Do you think he would be the magician? Lynn. Lynn. He, imagine him in this team today. I mean, He's a, he's a great player, and I think he would shine in any team, any era, any time. What do you think his value would be right now, Thierry Henry in the transfer market? There's 150 of you in live chat. Hit that like button if you love talking about Thierry Henry. Hit that like button if you loved watching him play. Um, Anna Friel is doing a lot of good stuff, Newman. Just check it out. She's on some mega shows, done a lot of stuff for Netflix. Have you not seen Marcella, Martella, however you pronounce it? Um, and she's also got a new show coming out here in the US, country music star she's playing. I didn't spit. Well done, well said. 250 million and one pound, says Matty K. Uh, respect the king, 250 now. He loves him. 
He absolutely loves Thierry Henry. And he's going to chime in on this for sure. Because we're doing 30 years of the Premier League, which, by the way, did you see what Nottingham Forest posted the other day? Kev's hat trick. Jesus Christ, Kevin Campbell. Not to, you know, shift gears, but dude's first touch, left foot, right foot, rockets here and there. Insane. This is what I'm saying to you about how lucky we've been to have some of these players play for our club. Ridiculous. 250 to 300 million. Okay, let's be, he's, he's a MasterCard, priceless. I love that. But let's like let's just say he's had three or four seasons at the Arsenal. Um, let's say he's won a league. How much is he worth? I think if you're saying, look at Neymar. I mean, Neymar had to go to Barcelona to do things at PSG. Some people question the competitive competitiveness of the league. I think that's a little bit disrespectful. But when it's mattered and He's had the team on his shoulders and he's been the guy in the Champions League. They failed miserably. Look what he's gone for. Ronaldo, Messi, Lewandowski, you know, Harry Kane was talked about 120 million at City. I mean, you've got to say 200 million, right? I would say that. I agree, GD. Name our type money. Ten. It would not be for sale. <laughs> One billion. And more up. Money couldn't buy him. He would be priceless. Yeah, let's get the likes up. 70 says our chief like officer. Emma Raducanu won the US Open. Excuse me. I really respect this kid and what she did, but she's done nothing since she's won that. And she's beating Serena Williams when Serena Williams is done. Serena Williams is the GOAT. She's a legend. She's a baller. I'm not having it. Be a little higher than Mbappe, says 33 fivers. Um, if we had Henri in the squad, we wouldn't lose games. E, I remember a match v Liverpool where Thierry slalomed past the entire team and scored. Everybody. Goal against. <laughs> yep. All right, let's get into that, shall we? He ripped teams apart, shredded them, shredded, absolutely shredded them. 30 years of the Premier League, Thierry Henry, what an absolute legend. Beautiful stuff. So this was the Leeds goal. This was, I think, the uh, Real Madrid. Was it the second leg or the first leg? You guys can correct me. Love the O2 shirt. Brilliant stuff. Look at this baby face right here. FA Cup winner. Just beautiful. Absolutely solid. All right, let's talk about our favorite goals, shall we? Um, my top five favorite Thierry Henry goals. Number five, I'm going to leave blank so we can figure one out together because I'm there's so many. You know what? Number five is, can you actually, when he came back on loan, there was a game at the Emirates. And I don't know if it was against New, was it Newcastle or Blackburn, where Robin Van Persie could have smashed it in the back of the net. He takes it on and he passes it to Thierry Henry in the penalty box and Thierry buries it. Do you guys remember that goal? It was during the loan spell, where which, by the way, everyone said was a terrible idea and Arsenal shouldn't do it. But we remember that so fondly. Of course, the iconic goal was the one against Leeds. Um, I know. This is what I'm saying to you. I spent the whole, the last few mornings torturing myself trying to pick five. I mean, it was insane. No, it wasn't Leeds. There was a goal at the Emirates. And Van Persie passed it to him and he scored. Was it Sunderland? I think it was Sunderland. I think you guys are right. 
that I'm going to put that in as number five because how much would we have loved to have had some of that Highbury squad era go into the Emirates era? And unfortunately, you know, we didn't. And we know how things went after that in the league, especially. But like I said, in our darkest days, we still won four FA Cups. It was, oh, there was one at, okay, maybe I'm going mad, you guys. But it was at the Emirates and Robin Van Persie passed it to Thierry Henry. Help me out with that. Right. Let me get to number four. There's a goal against Blackburn away. Um, it's a, it was a counterattack. I think Blackburn had had a free kick or a corner. I think it was a corner. And, and, and we obviously get the ball back. And Thierry Henry's got it on the left flank. And it's a swarm of players. I mean, every single time he got the ball, it was just like, you know, bees on honey. And he passes the ball to Fabregas. And it goes back to Thierry Henry. And literally, when he takes the shot, he has three and a fourth player on the periphery around him. And the commentator just yells, the master has done it again. I love that goal. It's not as talked about as some of his other goals, but I absolutely love the fact that he is so fearless. He had all these players around him and he starts the counterattack, passes it to Fabregas, Fabregas passes it back to him, and boom, scores an absolute screamer top bins to the goalkeeper's left side. Yeah, it was such a lovely goal. Beautiful goal. And um, that's my number four. Let me see if some of you have found out. Yes, yeah, Sesk. Just the fact that they were on the pitch for a little bit. Wasn't that lovely? January 7th, 2 0. Anti bullet, Wigan free kick. It was a tap in in the box. Um, here's, go to the Twitter today. Go to Twitter. I should put the link up. It's in the, in the highlights for his birthday. I can't remember who did it. But it's in that highlight. Um, can't be. This is Premier League, right? I love it. Spartak Moscow. Yes. Leeds FA Cup. Yes. Uh, yeah, this one. The West Ham away rocket 2002. This is the thing. The dude never scored simple goals. I agree with this. If Anelka had persisted at Arsenal... He may well have faded away in Italy, and that's more intriguing. How many does an Elka score with Burkamp for all those years? I think it's the biggest untold story of Arsenal as a player. Nicholas Anelka. What a player. Seriously. Greediness. Not an Elka, because he was young and he listened a lot to his brother. But my goodness, that is the, for me, there's two big untold stories at the Arsenal. One is Anelka and the other one is Alexis Sanchez. He should never have left our, you know what? When he goes to bed at night, I'm pretty sure the one regret he'll have is always leaving Arsenal. Always leaving Arsenal. Terence says Anelka was more deadly he was quality. Tortured you. E, how many plays did we have that tortured you? I talk to my um, Tottenham mates all the time. Tortured you. He tortured you. Absolutely tortured you. My third favourite goal. Let's move on. Again, this is Sophie trying to do a 30-minute show. Never, ever works. The back heel goal v Charlton. What? The audacity to do that. This is what I loved about him. Pick how many goals he scored from different angles, different styles. How many? I mean, it's ridiculous. We won 4-0. That was the 2004-2005 season, I believe. It was a pass from Reyes. Manamo. He humiliated Fortune and... It's in, it was an incredible finish. The, the just sheer gall to do that. 
was unbelievable. That was a brilliant goal. Do you guys like that one? The back heel. Yeah, how hard to do that. Like to have not only the technique, to have the confidence, but to have the skill and to pull it off. And he did things like that time and time again. Really quite unbelievable. Yeah, Arsenal and Elka's greatest football regret. Kleb, yeah, but he was injury prone. So I don't know if that's as big of a loss. He was so talented, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if he's on that level of um, of uh, Sanchez and Anelka. That back heel was pure genius. Absolutely correct. What a player. What a lovely player. You know what? There's an interview on the channel that not a lot of people know about. It was in the early days of the Highbury squad. It might be two years old, but it's evergreen. You should uh, Google Graham Hunter at Google, uh, search in our box, Graham Hunter. And I had a conversation with him just about Reyes. It is so enlightening. It's a beautiful conversation. Graham is a master at talking about football, but also how he followed. He knew Reyes from when he was a young player coming through the ranks in Spain. And it's a really great conversation and it's a, a, a nice insight into a very special player uh, who, you know, was part of our legacy. It is part of our, our football legacy. Um, all right. The next one for me is the solo run against Spurs. What else is there to say about that goal? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Thierry. What does a king do on his birthday? I wonder. Is he drinking Vouve? Is he driving a Renault? What is he doing on his birthday? I'd love to know. Um, the humiliation. The absolute genius. Okay, so I was watching an Anthony Bourdain episode. I'm a huge Anthony Bourdain fan. And I was watching an episode he did in Madrid where he went to a lot of Michelin, a couple Michelin restaurants. But what I loved about Bourdain was how he talked about food, the process, and he encapsulated human stories. And food was part of the process, like a conversation the beauty of it, right? Artistry, artisans exist in many industries. It's a beautiful thing to watch someone execute their craft in such an artistic, free-flowing way. You know, you can talk about painters, you can talk about chefs. No matter what walk of life, there's artistry, in many forms. Thierry Henry was a football artist. And that goal against Tottenham was his Picasso. It was exquisite. He meant every move, every moment, every second. His determination from the moment he got the ball from one end of the pitch to the other. And as an artist, he wanted to show what his vision was that ended up as a beautiful football painting. It is without doubt not only one of his greatest goals, one of Arsenal's greatest goals, it is for me one of the greatest goals ever. And I have it at number two, and here I am thinking it should probably be at number one. I have another goal at number one for different reasons. It is absolutely exquisite. And I just think that the the kneel down in front, I thought I had that picture, but I don't. Um, the kneel down in front of Spurs fans, the steward standing there, all of it was just ridiculous. 
I mean, it was utter humiliation. And he did that to Tottenham over and over and over again. And, and this is what Kevin and I talk about a lot on the show is that we beat them in the tunnel. I, I talked to my cousins who were Spurs fans and they just tortured. Just boom, done. I mean, can you imagine have been, being a Tottenham fan during the Henri years, the Vieira years, the Perez years? Perez loved the game against Tottenham, didn't he? Woo! Absolutely loved it. And in the end, to win the league at White Hart Lane with this squad, with these players, and doing things like this, absolute magic. I mean, seriously, he never lost to Tottenham. Van Gogh, they were, they were gloomy. All artists are gloomy. They're tortured, but their paintings, beautiful. Name me another artist. Go for it, E. Never lost to Tottenham. Look at their faces. Look at that. Thank you so much, Junior. I wanted to do something a little bit different than transfers and best 11s and who's starting against Bournemouth. It's going to be plenty of time for that. Today, it's the King's birthday. It's 30 years of the Premier League. and We're celebrating him. Iconic enough for a statue. Okay, Van Gogh. We'll go with Van Gogh, says the Tottenham fan. Look at that. Van Gogh it, Rembrandt it. Book it. Sponge, SpongeBob Square pants it. I don't care. It's genius. <sighs> Such great days. What a day that was. Beautiful. It is criminal he didn't win the Ballon d'Or. Absolutely criminal. Rafael Donatello. Wait, are you talking about the turtles now? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> There's never been a more iconic celebration. You know, the Eric Cantona collar thing, you know, that's an iconic uh, celebration, but no, 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 no. When you do that to your rivals, that is on another level completely. Completely. Nothing like it. And he did it over and over again. And yeah, I hear some of you, well, big games, big games. There's a lot of plays that haven't shown up in big games. For me, whatever he did for our club, I take it, I soak it up. I spit it out when I'm sitting across a table having a glass of vino with opposing fans. We can always wax lyrical about this guy. Always. Poetry in motion. The bravado. The winning mentality. The arrogance. The audacity. Beauty. All of it. He was absolute magic. And my number one goal, my favorite goal. And I think I picked this one over the Spurs one because of the rivalry. The volley against Manchester United. You see, Spurs were irrelevant. And they have been for years. Not really won anything. Not done anything. They just spit fire. You know, you could argue that the way they acted against Chelsea at the weekend. Like they, they'd won something. I can't remember what, was it Basuma acting like he'd just won the Champions League? Calm down, people. You haven't done anything yet. You got a point at a stadium where you haven't won in 37 games. Well done. Congratulations, you were shit and you got a point. So, even though the rivalry goes out the window, regardless of form, and doing that to Tottenham over and over again, it's just pure magic. Just love it. Bragging rights. But what he did to Dennis Irwin that day made him dizzy. I think he took Meclazine that night like he was on a ship. The waves. 
what happened to me. That flick and that volley against United in a time where our rivalry was at its height, we hated each other, Keane, Vieira. We built the Premier League on this rivalry, which is why it's fascinating to see the demise of Manchester United and the demise of us in the Premier League and how these two giants, especially United, who've won more Premier Leagues than we have, of course, like falling so far from grace. But at that time, the cockiness of United was matched by the cockiness of Thierry Henry. And let's not be mistaken, he is a cocky, cocky guy. But he backs it up. It was pure world class. The touch, the flick. And the narrative with United then was just insane. Going at it week after week. You know, one legendary manager to another. Two that have been very difficult to replace. United haven't won the league since Fergie left. They've won the Europa League and the League Cup with Mourinho and the FA Cup with Van Gaal. But in terms of the Premier League, they've fallen. Replacing Arsene Wenger so hard. It was just classic. It was brilliant. Football poetry. That goal is my favourite goal. I can watch it on replay over and over and over again. The flamboyance. Who put that in? Chrissy. He was flamboyant. He meant every single second. We won that day 1-0 as well. And what a goal to win that game. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> he was just great, Matthew, the arrogance. I mean, it was brilliant. Yeah, I never get this big game uh, argument. Why does a big game only have to be a final? Derby is a big game to me. Rivalry is a big game. Turning up... Kevin will tell you every game in the Premier League is a big game. Every single one. DJ Sassin, that volley against United was sick. Yeah. It was sick because of the players in that team as well. What he did to also a world-class goalkeeper. Humiliated them. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful that touch sweet 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 flawless absolutely agree listen 30 years of the premier league this is just the kickoff show and we're doing thierry Henry today because it's his birthday trust me matthew there's going to be plenty of time for would you believe it it's coming <laughs> It is absolutely coming. Don't you worry about it. All right. Um, hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Uh, the legend that in Super Kev will be back later on this week. And don't you worry about it. We also have a really... Let, let me know what you think, by the way, in the comment section, what your top five... If you can even narrow it down to five. Put 20 if you want. Put as many as you want in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like. I know a lot of people right now want to talk about transfers and tactics and stuff like that. But as you guys know, I like to do shows differently, mix it up a little bit. We're going to celebrate 30 years of the Premier League, Arsenal style. There's going to be another one next week. And if there's uh, subjects you'd like to cover as part of the 30 years of the Premier League, email me, thehybridsquad at gmail.com. Email me at thehybridsquad at gmail.com. The amount of world-class plays we had at Highbury. Maybe there's more. Let, let me know if you agree with Craig or not. The Screamer. You guys, let me know what you want to hear. You guys are my wingmen, my wing women, And um, my co-host tonight couldn't do this show without you. Love the show as much as I love the king. Well, I love that. Um, Craig says, Soph, loved it tonight. Memories. Such great memories. Great looking back at the King's goals. And you know what? We haven't even scored. How many have I left out? How many more are there? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. But to have a player like this, different levels. 
He was so good, guys. And when you go back and you look at his clips and stuff, you just forget. But then you remember real quick just how special he was. And speaking of special, on next Wednesday's show, I'm a hot mess. There's a lot going on in my life right now, by the way, that I haven't really talked about. But um, I will let, you know, I get a lot of notes from people and a lot of people talking about, you know, stuff going on and, um, I'm really grateful to the people that reach out to me on DM on Facebook and Instagram. I'm trying to be a lot better about posting some of our clips on Instagram and Facebook. If you know a young intern that wants to help out and be part of this, who can clip stuff for me, let me know. Um, you know, when you have other things going on, uh, and work and life and family, uh, things kind of get crazy. So you know, Tony hasn't been well lately and I don't usually share stuff, but we share stuff. And so just know that if I have to duck out of a show at the last minute, it's only because I'm taking care of my family. And so I wanted to let you guys know that because you guys are as open and honest with me and I want to be the same with you. All right. So with that said, next Wednesday, we have a blinding show lined up. It is with an Arsenal legend of the past that has never been on the Highbury squad. Email the Highbury squad at gmail.com, the Highbury squad at gmail.com. And guess who it is? The first person time stamped, date stamped, who gets it right. will get a beautiful Zenith coin. All right. It is absolutely worth it. Trust me. Ask Lynn, ask Jags, ask Mark B. It's beautiful. It's heavy. It's weighty. It's collectible. And the Arsenal Football Club are behind this. Our club are behind this. Okay? Email me and let me know who you think it is. You will not be disappointed. You will not. No, Lee Dixon has been on the show before, guys. That's a good one. Smudge has been on the show before. Parla has not. Thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. And uh, I love you guys, and I hope that you're all safe, happy, healthy, having a fantastic summer. Can never do this show without you. I love that you embrace our ideas, our outside-of-the-box stuff. And as I said, um, you know, we're going to be bringing different content as we do every single season outside of the usual stuff. And I love shows like this where we can just wax lyrical and remind ourselves how wonderful and beautiful our football club is. <laughs> oh my God, the heat's really got to me now. I'm going to have to go because the it's just getting too crazy. Merson, email me. Okay, think. Dig deep. I'm talking about legend, right? And, you know, Merson, is Merson a legend? Adams is. Jensen is. Is. My hair's about to turn into Jensen's hair, to be honest with you. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful show and I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. Hybrisquad at gmail.com. Let me know. Thank you so much. Um, Merson's a legend. All right. Let's see. We did legends versus icons. I might bring that show back as well. You know, I think maybe some people don't think Merson's a legend anymore because of how he's ripped the club on Sky Sport. But with that saying, we've all ripped our club over the last few years. So it goes without saying. Tammy, don't be cheeky. All right, hit the like button and um, please take care of each other. I'll be back tomorrow night. Uh, we've got Kev Says on Friday. Um, in the meantime, you know, keep your pitch nice and shiny, Ivory Squad style. See you tomorrow night. Thanks so much for joining me. I love you guys. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.
rude of me. At ease, 